Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 16 to the power x plus 12 to the power x equals 9 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. We're also going to be looking at complex solutions, if there are any. Now, how do you solve these kinds of problems? I want to talk about this particular problem and then also the general method because you've probably seen problems like this on YouTube before. Anyways, let's, we're going to generalize, in other words. So we have this equation. I'm also going to show you some graphs at the end, which is really cool. So let's see. First of all, when you have an equation like this, one of the things you should always check is if x equals 1 or 0 or negative 1 uh, is a solution. Why? Because sometimes you're given equations uh, such as, you know, 5 to the x plus 3 to the x equals 8 to the x. Obviously, 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, and x equals 1 is an easy solution. Obviously, that doesn't show that it's the only solution, but at least we get one solution. Okay, and then we can kind of go about whether the function is increasing, decreasing, whether there's going to be more than one real solution, so on and so forth. You can also look at the graph, which we're going to look at towards the end. Okay, so check those. Obviously, this equation is not one of those. x equals 2 could also be a option for example if you had the 3 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 5 to the x i think i made a video a long long time ago about this and this would be x equals 2 because as you know from pythagorean theorem right this is going to work okay great so those are some obvious solutions hopefully guess and check i know some people like this is not solving the problem well it is actually a solution method whether you like it or not uh, sorry uh, to break the news but anyways so let's get to the uh, basics of these kinds of problems. So we are given three different bases. They all have the same exponents. So that's a good thing. If they had different exponents, we would be in big trouble. Like imagine one of these was x squared or x cubed. That would be disastrous. Well, we had to use other methods such as AMGM, right? Sometimes it helps. Anyways, I talk too much, so I'll proceed. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick the highest base and divide everything by that. And you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and divide everything by 16 to the power x. And that's going to give us the following. And then I'll tell you uh, how to identify these kinds of problems so you can easily spot what to do and what the solution is going to look like. Okay? There's a pattern. Now, let's take a look. First of all, this gives us 1, which is nice. This gives us 12 over 16 to the power x. And this gives us 9 over 16 to the power x. Great. Now, we got a simpler looking equation, but notice that 12 over 16 can be simplified. And it's almost always going to be the case. Divide by 4, you're going to get 3 over 4 to the power x. And one thing I want you to notice, look at this equation, take a hard look, and I hope you see what I see. Do you see what I see? That is 3 fourths and 9 over 16. They are related. How? 9 over 16 is actually 3 over 4 to the second power because 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. Is that a coincidence? Absolutely not. It's special. Now, so we can proceed with substitution. Let's go ahead and do it. And then we're going to look at the general pattern and then we'll finish with the graph. Okay? Let's see. I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and replace this with u. How about that? So this gives me 1 plus u equals u squared. Let's put everything on the same side. u squared minus u minus 1 equals 0. And this is a quadratic equation, which is super duper easy to solve, right? There's a quadratic formula, which gives us u equals negative b, which is 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus plus 4, which is 5. So the solutions are real. Yay, great. But this is just u. Remember that. So from here, we get two solutions. u sub 1 is 1 plus root 5 over 2. And u sub 2 is 1 minus root 5 over 2. I want to separate those because 1 minus root 5 over 2, as you know, is less than 0 because root 5 is greater than 1. So what? why does that matter? Because u is equal to 3 fourths to the power x. A positive base raised to a power cannot be negative, right? Well, sort of. So u is equal to this, 
And now, if this equals 1 plus root 5 over 2, then we're good because we could use natural log on both sides, can't we? Let's go ahead and do it. So this gives us, if we ln both sides, and we're looking for real solutions, by the way, ln 3 over 4 to the x equals ln 1 plus root 5 over 2. And then we can move the x to the front, x, and then divide by ln 3 fourths, and we're going to get the answer from here, numerically, right? Okay, awesome. You're going to see this point on the graph in a little bit. That's the real x value. But of course, couldn't we find any complex solutions from here? We should be able to. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's set, so I want to go ahead and set 3 over 4x to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2. But I want to write that as 1 plus root 5 over 2 multiplied by e to the power. This is how you can complexify any real number, as long as it's positive, of course. e to the power 2n pi i which represents 1 in the complex world. And of course, n is an integer, right? So you're going to get infinitely many uh, values for 1, okay? Which is a single value in real numbers. Now, we can go ahead and ln both sides, but when we do ln or natural log, uh, this is what's going to happen. We're going to get this again, right? x times ln something. But then, this is going to give us a little bit of difference. ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus, because it's kind of like the aligning a product, uh, 2n pi i. And then finally, when you divide, you're going to get ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 divided by ln 3 fourths. And of course, there is going to be an additional piece, 2n pi divided by ln 3 over 4. Again, which is, uh, this part is real, multiply by i. That's going to give you the imaginary part. So when n is equal to 0, you're going to get this value that's a spe specific or particular value for n equals 0. Make sense? Okay, great. We can do the exact same thing for the other u value. Let's go ahead and take a look. But remember, one thing that's important is that that u value is negative, less than 0. So you got to be extra careful. Okay, why? Because when you take the absolute value, like when you write a complex number as r times e to the i theta, r is always non-negative, but this number is negative. So how do we do that? We're going to take the absolute value and use it as r. So let's go ahead and do it. Root 5 minus 1 over 2. Its opposite is going to be positive, of course. And then when we multiply it by... Now, how do you negate this, right? This is negative. Well, you're going to multiply this time by the complex version of negative 1, which is e to the power... 2n plus 1 n pi, right? 2n plus 1, I mean pi i. I already wrote the n there. Uh, be because this basically represents the odd multiples of pi, which is pi, 3, pi, 5, pi, so on and so forth. Make sense? And when we, you do the ln. And if you don't want to use the same variable or integer, I mean, you can go ahead and use 2k plus 1 instead, which is fine. But when you ln both sides, you're going to get x times ln 3 fourths is equal to ln root 5 minus 1 over 2. By the way, notice that this is well defined because this is the ln of a positive quantity, which is important. That's the real value. Plus 2k plus 1 times pi i. And then when we do the division, it's going to look like this. ln root 5 minus 1 over 2 divided by ln 3 fourths plus 2k plus 1 times pi divided by ln 3 fourths multiply by i, which is going to give you the real part and the imaginary part separately. And I'm going to show you the graph. We're not done yet. So here's the graph of these two functions, which is pretty interesting because obviously one of the functions, the blue one, is going to grow faster, but they intersect at a single point, which you can see right here. And if you zoom in a little bit, this is what the intersection point is going to look like. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.